So in this video, we're going to pick up with odds ratios showing up for interpretations. So let's kind of show you again with how the odds ratio shows up sort of naturally inside this logistic regression. So if I think about what we started with with the logit, right, this is the log of pi of x over 1 minus pi of x. And that is our alpha plus beta x. So now if I wanted to get rid of, in a sense, this log on this side, again, remember this is the natural log. If I raise both sides to the e, that's kind of how I can get rid of that. So then I could also say that pi of x over 1 minus pi of x would be equal to e to the alpha plus beta x. So again, why is that important? So notice what we have. This pi of x over the 1 minus pi of x is then the probability of success over 1 minus the probability of success, which then is the probability of success over the probability of failure which then is something that we would call, this is then the odds of success. Right, that's how we calculated an odds. It's the ratio of the, the probability of success to the probability of failure. That really is an odds, and it's shown up very, very naturally here in this logit link. So part of our interpretation between this explanatory variable x and our res de response variable or dependent variable, we can use odds ratios. So they can tell us how much greater the odds of success are for one level of the explanatory variable compared to another. Now what's going to be very different here for us is that x has been a quantitative or sometimes referred to as you know a continuous variable and we're not used to that idea when we've talked about odds. So we're going to first kind of refresh our mind back on more of a binary option. So suppose that we have an explanatory variable that only has two options where x is equal to 0 or x is equal to 1. So then if I wanted to find the odds of success when x equals 1, that's just going to be pi of x when x is 1 over 1 minus pi of x when it's 1. And then the odds when x equals 0 was well, going to be the probability of success when x equals 0 over 1 minus that probability. All right, so from there we can calculate an odds ratio. Remember kind of our general symbol we've been using for odds ratio is that Greek letter theta. So technically I could take the ratio of x equals 1 or x equals 0. It doesn't really matter which one's on the top. Generally we have the larger one of x on top. So I will take the odds when x equals 1 on top over the odds that x equals 0 on the bottom. And so how I would write this, or interpret it, I could say that the odds of success are theta times as large, when x equals 1, than when x equals 0. That's how we would do that interpretation. So again, just as a little refresher, if we got an odds ratio that equaled 1, that would tell us, again, that our odds of success are the same. If we got an odds ratio that was greater than 1, here that would tell us that the odds of success are larger when x equals 1, because that was what we put on top. Um, 
but if we would get an odds ratio less than one, then the odds are larger when x equals zero. All right, so hopefully what we've written right here doesn't seem new. It's just kind of writing things out pretty specifically um, from what we've already talked about with odds and odds ratios. Now, how does that really relate to this logistic regression that we're doing? So actually a very nice simplification here happens for logistic regression. I'm going to kind of show you every little step here so that hopefully it makes sense. So if theta is the odds when x equals 1 over the odds when x equals 0, this would then be pi of x equals 1 over 1 minus pi of x equals 1. Right, that's my top, that's my odds when x equals 1, over pi of x equals 0, over 1 minus pi of x equals 0. So again, all that is coming from taking what we have here and plugging these things in right there for us. So that's just where that's coming from. But now if I really want to look at, well, what do you mean that pi of x equals 1 over 1 minus pi of x equals 1? Well, look at what we have here. So pi of x over 1 minus pi of x is e to the alpha plus beta times x. So now we're going to do the same thing, except for now we know that x equals 1. So we're just going to plug in 1 for our x on the top. So there we're going to end up getting e to the alpha plus beta times 1, which is just beta then. On the bottom though, x is going to be equal to 0. So if x is equal to 0, I'm just going to end up with e to the alpha for the bottom part. Which then this is e to the alpha times e to the beta over e to the alpha. So we just end up then with e raised to the beta power. So what we've just shown then is that when x is a binary variable my odds ratio just turns out to be e to the beta. Well, that's great, but we haven't really been working with just binary explanatory variables. We've been more working with things that have been continuous. So let's extend that same idea there. So what happens when x is continuous? So first I'm going to have a new letter show up here. I'm going to be using this letter C. C is just going to represent some constant that is greater than zero. And C is going to be basically by how much I want to increase X by. So let's show what I mean here. So I'm going to have now my theta B, my odds, x plus c, so I'm going to add c to whatever x is, over the odds of just x. So I want to see by increasing x by c, how will that change my odds of success? I'm going to do the same idea here, where I'm going to plug in now this time I have x is going to be x or x is going to be x plus c, but the same idea of what I'm plugging in there. So this is going to be when x plus c is my odds, it's going to be pi of x plus c 
over one minus pi of x plus c on the top. And then on the bottom, we're just gonna have pi of x over one minus pi of x. Okay. Then going back here, I'm gonna use what I know that ratio is in terms of my e. In the top, instead of x, I'm gonna be plugging in x plus c, but in the bottom, we're just gonna be plugging in x. So on the top, we're gonna get e to the alpha plus beta times, instead of just x, we have x plus c, because that's what I have inside of here. And on the bottom, we're just gonna have e to the alpha plus beta x. Now this actually will simplify quite nicely as well. So this is gonna be e to the alpha times e to the beta x times e to the beta c over e to the alpha times e to the beta x and then I'm just gonna rewrite this and have the C in front of my beta this time. So it's very similar to what happened above e to the beta, this time we have e to the C beta. So notice if C was one, we would get the exact same thing here. Now talking through a few of these notes and then we're gonna put sort of an example above it here. So if x is continuous, what can be interesting to you is the value of x does not matter. So what I imagine thinking back to like our football example. So if I were to start having a 20 yard kick and I increased it by one yard to 21 yards, my odds ratio would be exactly the same as if I started at 40 yards and increase it to 41. So that one yard increase that I'm talking about doesn't matter where I'm starting at. So notice the actual value of x doesn't end up mattering because it disappears here from my actual calculation. All we're looking at for is how much we're increasing x by, but how much x actually is does not matter. What does matter, of course, is that size of the increment. That is, if I increase my distance of my kick by one yard versus five yards, that will make a difference. Now, a side note for those of you that have talked about interactions before. This would actually assume that there are no interactions in the model. Um, once you have interactions involved, there's many different things to have to start um, investigating a little bit more, and we won't be covering in our, any interactions in our class, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, but for those that have not seen an interaction, it sort of means that increasing it might depend upon another variable that you're looking at as well. If C happened to be one, we get the same thing as we had above, right? So if C equals one, you just get the same thing as you would have for a binary explanatory variable. But so how do we choose our value of C? Well, we gotta make C that makes sense for the context of the problem. So for example, a lot of times the default is to use a C equal to one, but that often isn't something that makes sense, for example. Um, so for example, in our football example, an additional first down of 10 yards might make more sense to look at. Or if we're looking at trying to predict a, a, the probability of a house selling based upon the square footage of the house, increasing the size of a house by one square foot doesn't really seem like a realistic thing that anyone would actually do. You'd probably add a much larger space, maybe 100 square feet, for example, to a house before you'd look at how that changes your probability of selling the house. So what I mean by that is let's write an example up here for our C equals 10. So for our example, So 
Suppose we're going to use a C of 10 and we will actually get to do that for our example. Then what we would say is the odds of success are theta times as large when x is increased by 10 units, whatever those units happen to be that we're talking about. Now, what do I mean as x is increased by 10 units? Well, keep in mind we're doing x here and x plus c on top. If we're using a c of 10, we're increasing x by 10 units. So that's where the idea of that interpretation is going to come from. In the next video, we'll actually get to practice this with our example.